Good afternoon. My name is Sherilyn Waddell, and I live at 105 North Water Street. I live and I own two historic properties within three blocks of the Garfield Center for the Arts. I came to live here from San Francisco because of the quality of architecture and the people, all of you, that reside in this place. The last thing I would want to do is to tell you to do something I do not think is right for our community or for this wonderful historic district. I do not often work professionally in historic preservation here in town, but I really felt that it was important to get involved with the Garfield screen issue. Because about 30 years ago, I was a founder of the Maryland Association of Historic District Commissions, and I served as its first executive director. I provide train I, in that capacity, I provided training to all of Maryland's Historic District Commissions, including the Chestertown Historic District Commission. In fact, that's when I first saw this town and vowed to live here someday. From the date of its construction, this theater building in Chestertown was a riot of color and light. As a venue for movie and live productions, it is one of few, if not the only, historic building in the Chestertown Historic District constructed specifically with a lighted sign as part of its historic and architectural character. The historic photographs, which you have seen, show no fewer than 11 posters, the largest of which was located under the marquee in the center of the first level. This poster was originally illuminated with 15 bare light bulbs. The marquee had three signs and zinc and glass pendants, behind which were located 42 light bulbs in restored, and they are back there today, in restored light sockets. That makes a total of 57 light bulbs lighting the front of this building as of 1932. All of this was specifically designed to be a visual carnival for attracting an audience at the time. From its very beginning, this was most definitely not a quiet building. The character of this building was never intended to have a sleepy signboard illuminated by a gooseneck lamp, as is the standard in other parts of the historic <coughs> district. The historic character of this building is embodied in its lights and signs as much as its architecture. Combined with the restored marquee, the programmable screen will return color and vitality, two of its character-defining features, back to this historic property. The programmable screen respects the character of the historic resource by being placed in precisely the same location as lighted historic signage for the building documented in a 1932 historic code above. The programmable screen will not change the style of the building or make it look older than it is. The surface design elements will not detract from or conflict with the structure's age and design. The building will retain its integrity. The sign will not conceal architectural detail or damage historic fabric. It won't clutter the building's image, and it won't distract from the unity of the facade, but rather complement the overall design. By placing the programmable sign in exactly the same location of a 1932 low-tech version of the sign, the applicant has retained as much of the original materials, detail, and design of the historic building as possible while using new technology. For these reasons, I do not believe that the programmable sign would seriously impair the historical or architectural integrity of this historic building or the surrounding area. And I believe that the general compatibility of exterior design, arrangement, texture, and materials proposed to be used for this application meet the Town of Chestertown Historic District Guidelines and I urge you to approve this application as presented. We also urge you to approve this application 
because it meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. <coughs> we know this because we asked for a review of the drawing set by the folks who wrote the standards, the National Park Service. The National Park Service provides technical preservation advice to owners of National Historic Landmark properties. Questions are routinely answered by the National Park Service. So we sent an identical copy of the drawing set we submitted to you, to the National Park Service experts, and asked them whether they thought this programmable sign on this historic building in the Chestertown Historic District met the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. What was their response? <coughs> The Park Service team of professionals, including two who live and have worked in Maryland and are familiar with Chestertown, reviewed the submittal. I recorded their response in a December 5th letter to the Garfield Center for the Arts, portions of which I shall read now, and the entire letter I shall share with the Commission. The National Park Service stated, and I quote, the programmable sign does not violate the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation in any way. The sign is wholly appropriate and restores the character of the property. The paper sign was lit. Placing the sign where it is proposed will not affect the lightscape because under the marquee there is a limited viewpoint. The sign is not attached outside. It is not egregious. There is a compelling case for it. What is the added value of the sign? It has free advertising for the community. End of quote. I submit my letter to the Garfield Center of the Arts for the record um, recording this conversation with the National Park Service. Please be assured that we did not attempt to influence their judgment in any way. We submitted the identical drawing set that you have received, and the National Park Service representatives had no idea whether I was working in favor or opposition of the application when I asked them for their comments. I should note that they also thought it was the best documentation that they had ever seen, thanks to Peter. In conclusion, the proposed programmable sign meets the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, the basis for the Town of Chestertown's Historic District Guidelines. This is not just our opinion, but of those who are responsible on a daily basis for interpreting the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, that is, the Technical Preservation Services Office of the Park Service. Therefore, we urge the Chestertown Historic District Commission to approve the programmable sign for the Garfield Center for the Arts.